Live from News 3, the Old Dominion Bull Court Press. Uh, the countdown to tip-off has narrowed to less than three weeks away as the Monarchs continue to prepare. Thanks for joining us tonight for the Old Dominion Full Court Press. We're catching up with some silver and blue players of the past, getting to know a new, new assistant coach and more throughout tonight's edition. But let's start with the Sun Belt. The league holding its media day today in New Orleans and releasing its preseason poll ahead of that back on Monday. The Monarchs picked to finish ninth in the Sun Belt in its return to the conference, maybe due to all the new pieces, maybe because of some unfamiliarity. Regardless of the reason, head coach Jeff Jones not sweating it too much as his team continues to prepare with November nearing. I think maybe they might have done us a favor. Let's just let's just put it at that and leave it. I don't know that uh, I necessarily put a lot of stock in it anyway, but uh, uh, I, I think that in a lot of ways is, is probably good and it doesn't bother me a bit. Louisiana, the league favorite, ODU's conference opener December 29th at home against Arkansas State. So, quick look at the rest of the preseason poll. Texas State, South Alabama, James Madison, Georgia State make up the rest of the top five. There you see ODU in ninth, fellow league newcomer Marshall picked to finish sixth. Bringing up the rear now, Georgia Southern, Arkansas State, another conference USA jumper in Southern Miss, and Louisiana Monroe. So with a new season comes new additions, not only on the roster, but on the coaching staff as well. News 3's Zach Staten introducing us to a fresh face on the bench, helping to get the players ready, and he's no stranger to the 757. Jordan Brooks' path to basketball started from a young age. My father was actually a coach man, so, you know, I grew up in the gym, you know, watching him coach every day. So, I mean, I just grew up watching it and I kind of fell in love with it. And he's no stranger to the area. I played at Hampton University and I grew up in the, uh, in the Washington, D.C. metropolitan area in Prince George's County. So after stops at Howard, southeastern Louisiana, and Xavier in his college coaching career, coming back to the 757 to coach at ODU seemed like an easy choice. You know, the culture, the tradition, um, you know, the history, you know, it was, it was something that, you know, was just a no-brainer for me. And coming under, working under a coach like Jeff Jones, you know, I, I felt it was a no-brainer. Jordan really... Uh kind of grabbed my attention and uh, you know we created a spot uh, on the staff uh, just just because as I said he kind of piqued my interest. Right. He's got the chops on the floor but Brooks and Jones both say where he stands out the most is away from it. Recruiting, recruiting, recruiting. He doesn't sleep very much uh, and uh, you know he just he recruits it seems 24 7. He's already well traveled in his coaching career but the up and comer knows he's still got a lot that he wants to pick up on learning you know how coach Jones does his X's and O's um, you know from an offensive standpoint as well as defensive standpoint and you know just learning under him on how to you know run a program and, and to win games. But for Brooks who better to do that with than the Monarch staff? You know working with coach Jones unbelievable staff uh, coach Donahue uh, coach Kavinsky and Jamal Robinson man it's been a real smooth transition so you know we've been getting after it. Zach Staten News 3 Sports. All right, thank you, Zach. Coach Brooks joins Jamal Robinson as new members of Jeff Jones' staff. We'll meet Coach Robinson coming up next week. Time for a 94-foot conversation with the Monarchs. Walking 94 feet now with Bryce Baker. And Bryce, let's start with a simple one. What's okay. your pregame meal? Pregame meal? Oh, I'm going with some spaghetti. Okay. Spaghetti for sure, yes, sir. Probably not too big of a helping, though, right? Nah, I mean, depends. <laughs> depends on how early the game is. Or right, and how early word. dinner is, too. Yep, yep. Funniest guy on the team. Who makes you laugh the most? That's a hard question. I say Ben. Ben funny. Emo funny too, though. Ben's getting a lot of votes here. Ben, yeah. All right. Yeah, yeah, clown for sure. You're playing Jeff Jones one on one to 11. Who's yeah. winning? Me. He ain't touching the ball unless we checking it up. Well, I was going to ask, <laughs> yeah. has Coach scored any points? Nah. All right. Nah, yeah, no, that, sir, that's, no, that's, sir. that's been a popular answer. Yes, sir. Um, what's, in your, what's on your playlist? What are you listening to playlist? to get hyped up for games? Uh, I say Big Fizzle. Uh, and this local Charlotte rappers. Okay. Yes, sir. Very good. Uh, yes, Halloween sir. candy. Halloween candy. I go with a Kit Kat or a Twix. Two good choices, man. Yes, sir. All right. Well, still ahead, some Monarch legends of the past get a chance to check out today's Old Dominion basketball squad. Why this group of former players and coaches back at Chartway Arena. That's right after this.
Old Dominion boasting a rich basketball history that reaches back more than 90 years. During a recent practice, some Monarch legends from different eras all convening on Chartway Arena, getting the chance to reconnect and get a small preview of what's to come in 2022-23. Those who have worn Old Dominion across their chest share a bond that dates back to 1930 and has provided them with plenty of lifelong memories. Syracuse win, DePaul win, beating the Russian national team. We came in second in the nation in Division II. Beating Coach Jones when he was a coach at UVA. <laughs> Last week, several generations of Monarchs putting eyes on the group that will make up the latest chapter in the Old Dominion basketball story. Jeff called me about three weeks ago and at the end of the conversation said, David, what do you think about getting some of the former players back to watch practice? And then maybe go out to eat afterwards. I said, Jeff, that's a great idea. Keeps us involved in the program. See some old friends, old coaches, uh, uh, get more familiar with the, with the program. A chance to reconnect with each other, relive the past, and get a glimpse of the future. We have so much in common, obviously, as former players, but it's almost like no time has passed. When we've seen these guys, it's like we haven't been away from each other for 40 or 50 years. It's also seeing guys that I played with. You know, and guys that I looked up to when I was here. So it's always good to have alumni back. And the opportunity to pass along some tradition and knowledge to the current players in silver and blue. It's kind of like passing the torch and, you know, standing up for you know, all these names that are around the arena and being a part of that. ODU is a special place. Uh, a lot of good memories, a lot of good tradition. We want to make sure that they carry that on and represent, you know, who's come before them to do it well. In less than three weeks, these alumni will watch the team open its season. New players, new conference, all bringing new excitement. I think there's a different vibe this year. I think there's a, a good feeling. I'd like to see them score maybe 76, 80 points a game. That'd be fun to watch. Going into a new conference, I think they, people don't know who we are yet. We're going to introduce ourselves well. So I'm hoping for a good season. Now, some of the alumni we heard from still involved with Old Dominion basketball. Dave Twardzik does color commentary with Ted Alexander. Billy Mann involved in ODU radio broadcasts. And Kevin Swan is the team's spiritual advisor. All of them also say they're excited to see how the, how the program has progressed from D2 to D1, Conference USA, now to the Sun Belt. So, here are some key dates to keep in mind as November nears. November 2nd, you can get a sneak peek at the Monarchs as they host Christopher Newport in an exhibition game. That's five days before the season opens with Maryland Eastern Shore. That also at Chartway Arena. November 17th finds ODU taking on Virginia Tech to open up the Charleston Classic. They'll play three games down there. Then in early December, back-to-back -back home games against 757 rivals. Got Norfolk State and William and Mary visiting Chartway Arena here in Norfolk back to back. So that wraps up tonight's edition of the Old Dominion Full Court Press. If you joined us late, catch the entire program now on the sports page of WTKR.com. For Zach Staten, I'm Mark Davis. Good night, everybody.